This time on Project Beyond, bringing together two normally incompatible worlds of fixtures leads to new headaches and a redesign of parts of our system. And can our support components handle the stress that we're going to put them through in production? All this and more coming up next. While our next generation system design has existed for just over a year now, we've been tweaking it a bit, especially recently. Hmm. Upgrades. They say that you can't build anything without a strong foundation. And while we're still going to discuss our tank to flushometer fixture components in this video, we need to provide a little backstory to shore up that foundation. For roughly the past decade, our fixture setup for demonstration and test videos has sometimes utilized a universal plastic tank sold under the brand name Impacto. While we like using it as it's lightweight and a bit smaller than traditional tanks of the bygone era, it does have a design flaw, at least for our purposes. Usually, toilets made of inflexible vitreous china or porcelain are just installed once and last for many years. Sometimes you might need to take it apart, service it, and then put it back together. And as long as you're careful and don't over tighten anything, it will usually stand the test of time. Impacto's tank design uses a thin plastic adapter plate with multiple bolt placement possibilities to work with most toilet bowls, although the tank hardware mounts as it normally would. Carriage bolts are placed into the adapter plate first. The plate is then screwed into the bottom of the tank and the combined unit is secured to the fixture. Unfortunately, with repeated installation and removal, plus dealing with larger vertical tank-to-fixture gaps, tightening and bending forces can indirectly stress and crack the bottom surface of the tank. So while we did use the Impacto tank to test our first-generation system, we kind of always knew that we would need to leave it behind. But we didn't abandon everything. This is one of the early, in-progress models of our first-generation custom tank design from December 2022. Our analysis concluded that to solve the plastic tank's design flaw and keep universal compatibility, we needed to fully separate the mechanical forces that would keep the tank and bowl locked together as one unit. This led us to creating the overly large vertical space, nearly 6 inches, that would exist between our tank and any connected bowl. A mounting plate would secure to the fixture and use a twist lock method to seal the lower half of the connection tube against the fixture inlet. The tank supporting pylons and stiffening structure would then mount to this plate in a sort of sandwich design. While this design had some benefits, like holding our electronic and some mechanical components, and being a fixture technology platform that could move to most any of our fixtures, it had its own design flaw. Gravity. Our tank will hold between 6 and 7 gallons of water and could easily weigh 60 pounds. Elevating the tank from the bowl affects the combined center of gravity, and not in the right direction. While seeing the water flow through transparent tubes from tank to bowl is an important part of this system and our videos, with all of these separate components, it was becoming impossible to guarantee the stability of the combined structure, let alone how to actually build some of the parts on a tiny budget. 
Cost has always been one of our limitations, especially because most all of the parts of our system and platform will either be nearly or entirely transparent. These days, just like we do, one can design nearly anything in freely available 3D design software like Blender. And at a reasonable size, you can have your clear creation professionally 3D printed with an SLA resin called Acura Clearview. When processed and polished, this material is nearly as strong as cast acrylic and as transparent as glass. But even without finishing services, small parts can sometimes cost hundreds of dollars each. Definitely not in our budget. But most of the same kinds of parts that can be resin printed can also be resin casted, something that we've been experimenting with. Of course, resin casting comes with its own challenges, usually with the silicone molds that must first be created from 3D printed masters, along with the time and effort involved in sanding and polishing to get perfectly clear parts. As weeks and months have gone by with Project Standstill, our recent efforts have focused on reining in the cost and complexity of the project's components and ensuring that we could get this gosh darn thing off the ground in the first half of this year. For some structural parts that don't need to be totally see-through, we tried creating thin-walled, translucent 3D printed structures and filling them with resin in multiple layers. This specific example resulted in an incredibly strong part that we were going to use with a passive latching collar system for the original tank system design, but it proved to be too difficult to scale up to full-size parts and still be able to manufacture them in-house. We will be using this technique for other parts of the overall system and our studio. This now brings us back full circle to integrating flushometer-based fixtures into our tank-based system, since, of course, we don't want to leave out any testing possibilities. To soft-launch the Project Beyond series this winter, we needed to show something in operation in parallel with the ongoing work to build and complete our system and test platform. It was the perfect opportunity to utilize the existing Impacto tank in a new way. Some top inlet floor outlet commercial fixtures have very narrow rear surfaces where the spud attaches to the toilet. This presents a problem when trying to balance a heavy tank of water on top of it, to say nothing for the fact that the spud is primarily designed to seat into the inlet, tightening horizontally via the expanding gasket with every turn of the nut. It's not designed to resist potentially strong tilting forces since it's assumed that the flushometer valve and connected piping is normally fixed in place. To make matters even worse, some fixtures that we've acquired over the years come with varying imperfections. Our Kilgore Argus, while being a rare find, has an uneven surface in its inlet area. In a normal installation, additional tightening of the spud nut or an extra silicone gasket could be solutions to prevent leaks, but we don't have those luxuries. Our tank and connection assemblies require precise positioning and everything must be nearly or exactly level. In short, to overcome the Kilgore's inlet problems, we've designed a custom mold to create a replacement spud gasket. We'll be covering this in the next episode, but it generally involves temporarily leveling the bottom of the inlet interior and creating a dam around the inlet so that we can flood it with silicone. Once cured and trimmed down, it will give us a perfectly level gasket surface and tighter fit. 
To enhance the mechanical strength of the spud's connection to the porcelain, we need more surface area. And again, we have to solve for an uneven surface. So, similar to creating the gasket, we'll flood the entire rear of the top of the fixture to create a perfectly level surface for a fixture attachment plate. Once tightened down by the spud, we'll get the extra mechanical stability required. But thinking ahead to our actual tank system, what does a nice level surface get us when we have a tank and support design that could just randomly tip right over? After a number of sleepless nights imagining worst-case scenarios, we recently took a really hard look at our sandwich design and threw a good portion of it right out the window. With our use of a slip joint connection as part of the design flaw fix, along with dealing with the pre-existing height of flushometer spuds, some minimum amount of height between tank and fixture would always be required. And while we looked at a few different solutions, including creating our own bridge-style box truss structure, the center of gravity was always the biggest problem. Shorter was better. And so ultimately, we went back to our own 3D printer. And after gaining confidence by creating and successfully stress testing a smaller version of our concept for 24 hours, supporting just under half of the final structure's maximum weight, balanced on a tiny IKEA table leg, we're excited to introduce our tank to fixture bridge. Utilizing time-tested mechanics of spanning beam design coupled with strong cubic infill, we've created a one-of-a-kind, only two-inch tall, totally rigid structure that concentrates most of the supported weight onto the fixture itself, but can safely cantilever outward on narrow rear toilets. Here's how it works. Care is first taken to ensure a level surface on the fixture before the proper inlet adapter with integrated seal is threaded onto the central support column. Bolts are inserted upward from below into the appropriate slots for the fixture and secured, and the fixture inlet adapter is then tightened until a seal is achieved. The removable tank bottom a one-third inch thick, custom cast piece of crystal clear resin will already have the tank outflow tube attached and is lowered into place, creating a watertight connection to the fixture. Permanently mounted, threaded rings exactly align the tank bottom to the bridge. And four caps are tightened from below, ensuring that the tank bridge and fixture form a 100% solid combined unit with a minimum change in overall center of gravity. Further details on the bridge and the tank design coming up in future videos. And speaking of coming up, it's time to level up, create and test the custom spud gasket on the Kilgore Argus. That and more on another pre-launch episode of Project Beyond.